what got you into El Ruderai in the first place? Because, I mean, it, it just, like I said, there's thousands and thousands of, of microbes in the, in the human gut. I mean, and to land on that one, was it clinical experience seeing that particular strain do better than others? What, what, what kind of started this story for you? You know, I don't remember exactly. I was thinking about oxytocin, that hormone. And there's a very interesting line of work. It's kind of creepy, though. Uh, from a woman, uh, a researcher at Stanford and then at Harvard named Irina Conboy, C-O-N-B-O-Y. And she was doing a series of experiments called heterochronic parabiosis. Hetero, different, chronic time, para, next to life. So really weird. But what it was, they took old rats. This is really creepy. They took old rats, cloned them so that they had now have a young rat who's immunologically and genetically identical, and then connected their circulatory systems, really cre- like Frankenstein stuff. Yeah, yeah. And the old rats became young again. Hmm. So they asked, what, what's the mediator of these effects? Well, it, it's, it's a work still in progress. But the first thing they identified was oxytocin. Other peptides, oxytocin is a peptide, but other peptides have since been isolated, but they, they don't have, often don't have names. They have like number designations, X, Y, Z, one, two, three, or something like that. But it was oxytocin that was the first. And then there was a series of experiments also done by her group where they gave oxytocin to animals and saw some of the uh, features of youthfulness return. So for instance, if you take an old mouse that has atrophied muscle, and you give it oxytocin, it develops muscle that is indistinguishable from young mice. So like like mice, humans, as we age, we lose a lot of our muscle, we get skinny arms and legs, and we get uh, uh, fractures, falls, and frailty. Well, um, so in, in animals, you get a restoration of youthful muscle. And then an MIT group, unrelated to Irina Conboy's group, uh, stumbled on some other effects of oxytocin. They didn't know what it was at first. They just gave mice rotori in their drinking water because they, it's known that rotori has very powerful anti-cancer effects. Colon cancer and pancreatic cancer has not been explored in humans yet, only in mice and, and cell cultures. So they gave a bunch of mice el rotori and they started to see things they didn't understand. They saw that their hair became thick and luxuriant They saw that their healing was accelerated dramatically. They saw their immune responses improve. They saw mating behavior. That's a that's a uh, that's sexual behavior among mice. There's mating and grooming. Uh, They saw old mice not getting old. They stayed young, like a Rena Conboy's crazy experiment. And so, and they just said pretty much, well, there you go. Isn't that interesting? So I saw this. I got the same microbe they were playing with. And it was available at the time as a commercial product for infants. So the dose was inconsequential. So I asked myself, well, how can we increase the the microbial counts? Because if you bought the product, you'd have to take 100 tablets a day. Mm -hmm. Impractical. So I just fermented it to amplify bacterial counts as a yogurt. It's not yogurt. It looks and smells like yogurt. but uh, And we increased microbial counts. We counted the microbes. We get about 300 billion per half cup or 120 milliliter serving. And I just started talking about this with my audience and people are thousands of people have been doing it. This doesn't often happen. Where something where phenomena seen in mice translate into humans. Most of the time that falls apart. Things we see in mice don't apply to humans. In this case, everything that was seen in mice, to my great surprise, has played out in humans a return of youthful musculature, rise in testosterone, increased libido, uh, increased generosity, acceptance, all these great, great effects have played out in humans. And so, uh, and since then, we've learned a lot more about rotori and other microbes. It's, we also, rotori tends to collaborate with other microbes for other beneficial effects. But, uh, so I don't even remember how I got started, but it was those crazy heterochronic parabiosis, creepy <laughs> experiments that kind of got me all excited. Well, that's interesting. So oxytocin really sounds like it's one of the main mechanisms of action that is just the increase in oxytocin. Is that, have they, have they parsed that into kind of like, you know, microbiome responsible for generating serotonin and dopamine. Is it is it kind of a similar the the peptide oxytocin is produced by 
these bacteria or is it just that there's a stimulatory cascade that 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 allows for the increased production of oxytocin or do we know so we know some things from the MIT group. There's a group at Baylor that have done some work. There's a group at one of the University of Texas campuses that's done some work. So there's been a fair amount of work. We do know this. So reuterite takes up resins in the GI tract. It exerts a peptide uh, on the intestine. That's called resistant on the intestinal wall. And then it sends a signal via the vagus nerve up through the chest, neck, and, and to the brain. And it causes the hypothalamus in the brain to release oxytocin. So a lot of the effects are achieved that way. Then there's some other effects exerted via the immune system, various T cell subsets. So there's still lots of pieces missing, but those pieces are known. If we clip the vagus nerve, as the MIT people did, the whole thing is blocked. So that that much is pretty. So the so-called gut-brain axis is part of all this. Yeah, so, so the vagus nerve is key, at least in mice, um, in terms of inducing these beneficial effects. And so you, you started creating a yogurt. We talked about this last time you've making, having people make their own yogurt and, and, um, they're coming back to you reporting all these wonderful changes. So can we, let's talk about, you know, kind of just from top to bottom, what are some of the biggest things that your, your community is reporting back to you? Well, the ladies go nuts because they, 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 they're always concerned about their skin. And so the ladies are reporting a reduction in skin wrinkles, particularly the fine ones like crow's feet and smile lines. Over a longer period, the deeper nasolabial fold, forehead wrinkle, those require greater volume of collagen in, in the dermis. So those take longer. The fine ones take about 90 days. Uh, youthful muscle ten, tends to return in the four, first four weeks. I, I'm a chronic insomniac and I've all, all my life I've struggled to sleep. Now, Deep, restorative sleep, vivid childlike dreams, flying, showing up in the school play, not having rehearsed your lines, all that kind of kid stuff comes back. For me and for many other people, a restoration of youthful musculature. So this was going back a number of years in my early 60s. I gained 13 pounds of muscle and my strength increased by 50% over three weeks. And I don't know about you, I hate going to the gym. I can't stand it. So I, I would go 15 minutes tops once a week. And yet I gained 13 pounds of muscle and a marked increase in strength. I don't think everybody gets that that magnitude. What I, what I think I'm seeing is people who had more muscle in their youth get a return of more muscle. So if you're a long distance runner and didn't have a lot of muscle, you might not get the same effect. But if you were a track kid or or football or weightlifter, you'll get a lot more muscle. So we're seeing that. We're seeing a rise in testosterone. The ladies are reporting a rise in libido. They're also reporting the older ladies who lose vaginal moisture and sensation, it comes back. Uh, there's, a, there's a suppression of appetite specifically for snacking, so-called hedonic eating, that is, that is snacking just for, just for laughs, not for, to, for sustenance. That seems to go away. Um, uh, in other words, so smoother skin, youthful muscular, musculature, uh, restoration of youthful hormonal levels, I think what we're seeing in many ways is turning back the clock 10 or 20 years. And you see it on people's faces. They, they look younger. They act younger. I've got people in my audience. They say, I'm 84 and I ride my mountain bike and I pass the 35 year olds. <laughs> so I, I believe that's what we're seeing. Have you, have you documented any of these? I mean, are, are any of your audience members documenting? Like, are they going to their doctor like pre post? You know, testosterone went up X. You know, are, are you are, have you documented anything as far as like raw numbers at all? Well, the waist circumference. So we get a, about a reduction, just short of three inches on average in waist circumference, um, as much as eight and a half inches over, over ninety days. The we did a, a small series in twenty guys over 55 and saw a 50% rise in testosterone. Uh, we have, there's so much more to explore. We have a body composition study I'd, I'd like to get done hopefully next year. Budget permitting, you know, we're not pharma. We don't have billions of dollars to spend. We have a few hundred thousand dollars to spend. So we'll do a body composition, either DEXA or bioimpedance. The document quantify just how much muscle returns in most people. Anecdotally, we're seeing something like seven to eight pounds in ladies, a little bit more in guys. 
Well, so ladies get mad at me sometimes. They say, hey, I did your rotor eye in the program. I gained eight pounds. I'll say, well, did you look at your in the mirror? What happened to your waist? Oh, my waist is smaller. <laughs> what happened to your shoulders and your neck and your thigh? Oh, I'm more muscular. I'm more, I'm more firm. <laughs> so, so we're seeing that play out anecdotally. But there's still lots more to document. I'd like all our, all my future studies will also include psychological profiling for measures of empathy, generosity, and well-being. Because I think that to me is the most important thing we do. It's great to have youthful muscles. It's great to have higher testosterone and libido. But if we can have an impact on social behavior in a positive way, that I think is really cool. Yeah, no doubt. It's, especially in today's times, it's just gotten it's gotten a lot more. Uh, animalistic out there in the world. At least that's my personal experience. My wife, my wife talks about it all the time. She's really frustrated with the world. I think just because she used to, she felt like she used to could like walk up to strangers, like you were saying earlier, walk up to strangers, say hello, introduce yourself, have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And she feels, she says all the time, I feel like that's just left the world. Like people are so on guard and they're just so, you know, standoffish and they're just so quick to anger. And that's super, super frustrating to try to navigate the world when it when it's when it's responsive that way that that's interesting to me I, I think you know a bacteria that has the potential to create human empathy I mean that wow I mean if that if that pans out to be accurate you know and we can validate that scientifically that I mean that's a major world game changer in my opinion you know, so I, I yes we've co-founded a company for making products but I also co-founded a um, what I call the Natural Biosciences Research Foundation to fund some of this research that doesn't yield profit. You know, if we make people happier, there's no money to be made by that. But it's 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 something we need to do, as as you point out. You know, humans have always been an angry, violent species all throughout history. But I th I think as as you and your wife have noticed, I think it's worse. And even just common, polite social interaction has kind of fallen apart. But I see it coming back. All these people who say, you know, I, I, I really like my spouse better now. I want more hugs. <laughs> I, I, people at work say, don't hug me anymore. I mean, I'm seeing it return. I, I'm, I'm convinced there is a real effect here, but we'd like to quantify it. Yeah. And wouldn't it be get, great to get published data? Um, you know, that to me, that's that's mm -hmm. where you get next scale level of 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 uptake, you know, humans. And then re more researchers come on board and do more studies to validate. And then you have the information that can go and spread far and wide because it's this is the natural industry is already up. Against, as you mentioned, I mean, you're up against big pharma and they don't want this stuff. Like I've been involved in my not what your career path has been like. Well, I, I, I know some things that you shared with me, but like my own personal career path, I have been in three or four different situations where information where I was I was involved in some research or I was asked to be involved in some research or I was trying to figure out why lab reference ranges were radically changing on some of the labs that I was using so I would reach out to lab directors and it was amazing to me how corrupt some of these changes and why these changes were made and it was like it was to me it felt like it was a direct assault on trying to minimize the power that nutrition can have to help humans so that not 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 for the sake of 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 making pharmacy better, but for the sake of making nutrition less mm -hmm. appealing so that people would just abandon it for pharmacy. And, and 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 even talk to one gentleman who says, yeah, that's what we're doing. That's what we're attempting to do. So um, but to have other scientists and, and have a research company that can actually validate uh, validate findings like this and then share it. Cause I mean, today's, today's beautiful because we have social media, you've got like your own group and I've got a group and, you know, information is instantaneously shared across platforms. And in moments you can reach millions of people without any kind of media suppression or other suppression. So to me, this is great. You know, that's why what you're doing is so important. I hope what I'm doing also, because, you know, people have to turn to people like you and me via podcasts, YouTube, et cetera. It's not coming through major media. You won't hear this on ABC, NBC, or CBS, or cable uh, news. Uh, you won't get it from most doctors, sadly, most mainstream doctors. John Q. Primary Care doesn't know anything about rotary or, hormon or hormones or nutrition 
or the microbiome. And it, it, they, they should. In fact, I think they've ab abdicated their responsibilities by not doing so. But that's why what you're doing is so important.